What's up blockheads? Today I'm doing a test ride on the brand new 2019 Indian Chieftain. I'm up here at Standard Motorcycle Company, which is run by Jason Paul Michaels. If you guys don't know, he is a brand ambassador for Indian and he sorted us out with some test rides. The 2019 Indian Chieftain comes in starting at $21,999. It has a 111 cubic inch engine. For those of you wondering what that is in displacement, that is 1,811 cc's. It has a wet multi-plate clutch. It is electronically fuel injected. The engine is actually called a Thunderstroke 111 V-Twin. The exhaust is a split dual exhaust with crossover. No reported horsepower on this one for some reason. And it has a peak torque of 119 foot-pounds at 3,000 RPM. Fuel capacity on this bike is 5.5 gallons. Ground clearance is 5.1 inches. Has a 31 degree lean angle. Overall length of 98.7 inches. A rake of 25 degrees. A seat height of 25.6 inches. And the bike weighs 822 pounds with a full tank of gas. And it sets on a 65.7 inch wheelbase. For the front brakes, it has a dual 300 millimeter floating rotor four piston caliper. And for the rear, it has a single 300 millimeter floating rotor two piston caliper. The front tires are Dunlop American Elite 1. 30 60 19s setting on a cast 19 inch by 3.5 inch front wheel the rear is a dunlop elite 3 multi-compound 180 60 16 setting on a cast 16 inch by 5 inch rear wheel for suspension you have a front fork tube diameter of 46 millimeters telescopic fork cartridge type front travel is 4.7 inches rear suspension is a single shock with air adjust which has 4.5 inches of rear travel for a few of the features it is a steel gray has a factory warranty of two years and unlimited mileage. You do have the gauges, which I'll be going over here in just a moment. You also have an infotainment touchscreen display, which is a seven inch. And then you also have gauges, which I'm gonna go over here in just a moment as well. Standard equipment includes seven inch touchscreen display, power windshield, vinyl gunfighter seat, selectable ride modes, rear cylinder deactivation, ABS, cruise control, keyless ignition, 100 watt audio system with AM, FM, Bluetooth, USB, smartphone compatible input and weather band. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed the specs there. Doing a test ride on this today. Gonna give you guys basically my general thoughts and feelings of the bike. Just to be honest, right off the bat, I'm not the biggest fan of baggers just because, you know, I like my bikes smaller, sleek, more minimal, but I do have a ton of appreciation for baggers and what they're built for. I mean, obviously you've got some storage capacity. If you're hauling some stuff, you've got a full front fairing, you know, blocking the wind. It is a much more comfortable ride, say versus a Scout Bobber, or that's my bike over there, which is a uh, 2017 Dyna Lowrider S. Rode that to Daytona yesterday, <laughs> and I was wishing I had, or was riding a bagger. Just so because the wind buffeting on the helmet after a while, you know, an hour or so of riding on the interstate, this is way more suited for something like that. So. Obviously, if you guys are buying it for more long distance, hell, even around town, great bike. Just doing a quick walk around of the bike before we throw a leg over it. You've got dual disc front brakes, floorboards, footboards, whatever the hell you want to call them. You do have some passenger pegs, storage capacity with the uh, rear bags. You're going to press in, pull up, they latch pretty easily. This is what they look like on the inside, detachable. And then they do have a, looks like a weatherproof liner on the inside here. Cargo limit, 22 pounds. They latch up pretty easy. So that's nice and lockable seat feels comfy nice little area for a back passenger Ooh, we got a free hoodie in here nice somebody's hoodie <laughs> dual exhaust on the back so i think it's a two to one yeah two to one to two so it basically splits off with this one you've got a ton of functionality up here with like the uh <laughs> i don't know what you would call it the cockpit you've got basically this uh this, this user interface buttons down here so gps music on off phone and then we're going to be going over controls as we leg up and get to the riding portion up here you've got like a little storage compartment area looks like we've got a iphone charger looks like we have a key fob as well and just another little cord so let's we'll leave all that in there it's a nice little storage option so uh Raj just said it was one of the most comfortable motorcycles he's ever ridden. So, gonna throw a leg on it, try it out. Hitting the rest of Sugarloaf. Whoo! Big old bagger. Kickstand up. All right, going over controls real quick. You've got your on off, you've got your cruise control here. 
would assume. Yeah, cruise control indicator there. Oh yeah, see it? Just the heights of the windshield. That's awesome. So you can go down with it or you can press up and go up with it. That's super nice. Left side here, you've got control for music, control for, I'm assuming the menu there, just connected to Raj's, uh, Raj's phone. Uh, indicators left, right, yeah, there. Press in hazard horn here you got your selection switch back here which changes that that's cool we'll leave it to that and you've got your high beam low beam indicators here uh, this is your speedometer you've got your fuel range looks like you have the cruise control right yeah left indicator high beam low beam neutral light gas light little s and then kilometers an hour uh, over here on the right side you've got your rpms you have a selection switch here no what am i doing so you've got these little trigger things on each side that you use. What is that for? Oh no, it turned it off. So I guess you press that first to turn it on. That's the boot screen. And then to turn it on, obviously make sure you're in neutral. Or hit OK. Oh, this works for gloves. Pretty cool. You're going to pull in the clutch and then you don't even have a starter switch. You just press down and it turns right on. Don't worry if you don't know to turn that down. <laughs> So yeah, you just press that and it turns right on. Pretty cool. And then that's your on-off switch. I think you do have a key fob in here. Yep, key fob in there with some sunglasses, little storage compartment. And uh, yeah, those are the controls. So floorboards, footboards, whatever you want to call them. I'm good to go. Woo! There's a much bigger back than the Scout. <laughs> so coming to a stop. Feels pretty nice. Like I was saying in the last test ride video, if you guys haven't watched it, but I'm, I talk about basically feeling like you're on top of the bike or in the bike. Now this bike, it feels like you're in the bike. Trade back. Huh? Trade back. It's a trade back motorcycle. Oh, he said trade back. But he said straight back. <laughs> yeah, he wants to be on this one. Oh man, this one is comfy. So left side, you do have a toe shifter. Uh, I know a lot of these bigger touring style bikes, they have uh, heel and toe shifters, but this has just the toe shifter which is good for me because that's what I use as a toe shifter. I'm not used to heel shifters, so I don't really even try to use them whenever they're available. Sorry, sorry, couldn't wave, new bike. And to turn for the first time. Ooh, some nice power to it, man. So this has the 111 cubic inch, which is gonna be what, like 1800-ish cc's. This is weird, man. So like with the windshield up, I mean, you can feel the wind here, there is a little tiny bit of buffeting on the top of my helmet. I'm gonna put the windshield down here in just a second as soon as we're done with some of these turns and see how it feels. Yeah, I mean, it's really super smooth. It takes these turns nice. So let's put the windshield down. See the difference. Uh, I like those signs. So it's funny. I don't feel like I feel like I feel the buffeting as much with the windshield down. I wonder why that is. That's strange. You feel like with it up, you would feel it less. Down, you would feel it more, right? It kind of seems to be the opposite effect for some reason. It's really strange. I think I actually prefer it down. Because, yeah, I do get like this weird buffeting with it up. Oh. That's weird. All right, well, we're putting it down. I do like that you can, like, the flick of a switch, you can do that, though. It's pretty cool. Man, first and foremost, the first thing I'm thinking when riding this thing is that it is damn comfortable. It does have some nice power to it. The seat, pretty comfortable. Definitely offers a lot more uh, support <laughs> as like say the uh, Scout Bobber. Feels nice in the turns. It doesn't feel like, you know, it looks like a big old heavy bike, but it's, I mean, once you, you know, get it up and you're going in before that's what she said comments, it feels uh, pretty weightless. Suspension on this thing feels nice. It's not too stiff. This thing has some nice power. Man, this, this windshield thing, I don't know. It feels strange, man. It's like, is there more buffeting whenever it's up? I want to say that there is. Woo! Apparently we're getting off right, right here. Oh, the cup holder. Change oil soon. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm gonna go through grass. <laughs> You're gonna have to go through the grass. Yeah. It's 
slotted. So the braking is good. <laughs> Dual disc front brakes on it. I think I was saying earlier. Braking feels nice. Had to come to a sudden stop there. Man, this is surprising. It feels surprisingly uh, agile, nimble. It smells like a skunk. So, this is kind of crazy, but I feel like there's so much more wind noise to this bike for some reason. Maybe it's because of like the mirrors sticking out. I feel like a lot of it's coming from over here. But uh, that's not something that I was experiencing on the bobber. Of course, it doesn't have that big old front fairing to it, you know. Now, I don't feel as much wind as I would with the Scout bobber, obviously because of the front fairing. But there are some little things, like I said, the buffeting, the top of the helmet. With the windshield down, it doesn't feel as bad, which is strange. But, I mean, the aerodynamics of the helmet, I guess, like come into play there. Back the hell up, bro. Look out. In terms of ergonomics, I'm 5 foot 10 inches tall. This is how I set. My knees are bent while setting on the uh, floorboards. But yeah, ergonomics on this bike, it is uh, very comfortable. That's for sure. Shifting on this bike feels very prominent. Same as the other uh, Indian, which is a good thing. Uh, as in my test ride videos, I always say the reason I mention that is because if you guys have ridden a motorcycle that has a mushy shifter, it doesn't give you very much confidence that you shift it into the next gear, right? This one has a very positive upshift and very positive downshift. You can feel it in your foot. It's very prominent, which, like I said, gives you confidence that you've shifted. You do have a gear indicator here. In terms of the dashboard here, there's a lot of stuff. I don't really know what does what. So I guess I can just start pressing buttons. It is a touch screen, so you can use it with gloves even. So if you press that, looks like it goes to a dashboard. Oh, it has a gear indicator there as well. It tells you your speedometer, your fuel range, and your RPMs. That's pretty cool. What if I press it again? All right, if I press it again, oh, so this bike has ride mode. So you've got tour, standard, and sport. Can I switch over to sport? Dude, it feels so much different. Oh my god. So you're able to change the modes like while you're riding. You don't have to be at a stop. That's pretty crazy. And it, it is a noticeable, noticeable change. And I want to say there's a change in the exhaust note as well. That's interesting. Wow. That's impressive. Yeah, there's a there's totally a change in the exhaust note. That's cool. I'm glad I started just randomly pressing buttons and stumbled across that. <laughs> So, and then you've got your touring mode, which I'm sure is probably a little more uh, economical for fuel. I'm going to leave it in sport mode because, you know, sport mode is fun. If we press it again, gives you another screen here. Looks like there's three, so there's three dots at the bottom there. And this one shows your fuel range, average miles per gallon, average speed, time that you've been riding, and your mileage, as well as a uh, instant miles per gallon, so your fuel economy right there. Press it again, I'm sure it goes back to, yeah. That's cool, that's really nice. And it works with gloves, also really nice. We press the music icon. Funny. It says Bluetooth audio not connected, but it does have the option. Raj just had his phone connected to it, and so he was blasting some music. Press it again, it does have FM, AM tuner. It's got an NOAA weather radio, Bluetooth audio, and then a USB connection, which is up here. These buttons, they have a really nice feel to them when you press them. Press it again for the uh, phone icon. I imagine if you had your phone connected to it, it would give you a list of like your contacts and stuff like that. Press it again. Yeah, nothing, so it stays there. Oh man, this sport mode feels nice. It gives the bike a new life. It definitely it does make it feel more torquey, which is pretty cool. Alright, and then the button on the right looks like navigation, so I'm gonna press that. Yeah, it takes me to a map. Yeah. This is nice, man. I'm pleasantly surprised. My test rides need to all be like this, man, on these roads. <laughs> 
One thing I will say for my height, whenever this screen is up, it's weird, but like I can see into the distance right just fine, but like for uh, if I were if I were pacing Paul, you know, like a little closer behind if we were riding like staggered, it's weird because it's like right in your line of sight and there is like some distortion obviously since the windshield is curved a little bit. I'm sure you guys can see it in the video. But it is a little distracting. I'm sure after a while you get used to it, but I'm honestly I'm just not a fan of it. So probably just gonna keep it down for the most part. Sorry if the noise is a little louder because of it, but I don't know man. Personal preference thing I guess. I like being able to see and it doesn't feel as buffety. It's really strange. The last time I mentioned that on a uh, touring style bike, a bunch of people were like, yo, press this button and it'll open this vent and it'll stop the buffeting. The Jimmy buffeting, which was uh, cool, but I don't see anything like that on this bike. I think that's everything, right? I'm pretty sure we've gone over it all. We do have like this thing here, which uh, there's a lock and an unlock icon. You've got your uh, fuel there. And then on this side, that's actually just a dummy cap. It screws in, so nothing happens over there. Now that's pretty traditional on a lot of like cruiser style bikes. Man, the sport mode, oh my gosh. It makes the throttle way more touchy. Jeez. <laughs> that's nice. I'm impressed. It's a comfy ride. It's got a good amount of power. Using all this stuff with gloves feels really nice. The buttons feel good. You got cruise control. Connect your phone to it. Man, this is it's a nice bike. I'm impressed. First time on an Indian touring style or an Indian bagger. And this is totally the, the route to take to do a test ride like this. Loving it. It's funny, I've still got my hat on my belt loop. Rob got bags back there. What am I doing? I'm gonna have to get it out of the sport mode just to see what the rest of them feel like, but man, it feels nice. Sorry, 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 sorry. So I'm gonna change the mode here, go to touring. So it basically waits for you to come off the throttle to change the mode. There is a noticeable difference whenever you change the ride mode in the throttle response. Like it is Pulling back on it, it is way more smooth with the touring. I switch to standard, come off throttle, it changes. It's a little more responsive. And then if I do sport, it's much more responsive. And you see the difference in the exhaust note? So look, I'll change it back to touring real quick. I'm sure you guys can hear that exhaust note. Listen to the exhaust. I'm gonna do sport. Listen. Dude, that is noticeable. <laughs> that's awesome. Anyways, that's a test wrap, guys, on the 2019 Indian Chieftain. I hope y'all have enjoyed the video. I'm well impressed. I know I started out saying like I'm not I don't really do baggers, but like I said, I can appreciate their application. You know, they're made for more distance, made to haul some stuff and be more comfortable and hook up your phone and Obviously, there's way more bells and whistles on this as compared to, you know, what I was just riding, which was the Indian Scout Bobber. But it just depends on what you're uh, what you're buying your bike for. Go to a dealership, swing your leg over them, take a test ride if you can, and uh, see what you like the most. Anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed the test ride video. If you did, be sure to hit the like button. If you're not subscribed already, be sure to hit that subscribe button for more content like this. Hit that bell icon as well while you're over there so it sends you notifications of future uploads and activity. If you guys have friends out there that are looking for test ride videos that like motorcycle content, be sure to hit that share button. You guys sharing the channel helps so much. And uh, if you guys do hit that share button, I just know that I do greatly appreciate it. I don't know if you guys just saw that windshield perk. That bug just hit the windshield instead of hitting into my helmet. Till next time, y'all ride safe out there. Stay vigilant. I'll catch y'all later. Where are you, kickstand? Oh, what? Put the kickstand down and it turned off, so that means it must have a kickstand sensor. Power. You put this thing into sport mode and it becomes a totally different bike. Oh, yeah. Crazy. Like, you can feel it so much in the in the throttle response and the exhaust note changes as well. Exactly, yeah. It's, it's nuts. Like, 
the first time I rode this, I'm like, man, that thing's got to be hard to maneuver. But no. you start getting up to speed and getting in these corners. That is a much more comfortable bike than that. Bike. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I got on that bike. That's why I was saying to you at the, at the turnoff. I was like, trade back. I don't like this. Yeah, you said, well, after we left, I'm like, oh, he said trade back. I thought you said straight back. I'm like, what is straight back? <laughs> 